What does getting people to click have to do with kick-ass edits? Hey, this is Meredith and this is the third and final kick-ass edits tutorial in this series. Actually, it's not, but I'll get to that in just a second. In lesson one, we covered a sneaky little time-lapse editing trick and in lesson two, we covered snappy jump cuts. And today, it's all about getting that click, getting people to actually click on your video and watch it. See, when you create a video, whether you want your friends and family to watch it or whether you want to watch it yourself at some point in the future or maybe you want to get some more YouTube views, you have to think about the life cycle of a video. You need viewers to find, click, watch, enjoy, and engage with your video or even re-watch it. I just made that up. <laughs> but think about it. You want people to watch your videos and enjoy watching your videos, but before they can even get to that point, they have to find and click on the video. So our third tutorial in the Kick-Ass Edits tutorial series is how to create an eye-catching thumbnail for free that will actually make people click on that video and watch it. And of course I created a printable cheat sheet for you with all of the thumbnail layout examples that I'm gonna show you how to create today. But before I get into that, I want to let you know that this doesn't have to be your last Kick-Ass Edits tutorial because I'm doing a bonus tutorial as a webinar, so I hope you'll join me using the link in the description below. I'm gonna give you the 10 actual steps to creating kick-ass videos, like how to quickly review your footage to spot what you want to keep and include in your video. We're also going to talk about background music and creating a story and syncing your music to your jump cuts. We're going to talk about titles, exporting and uploading. And of course I have a printable worksheet for those who attend. So hit the link in the description below this video to grab your seat for the next available webinar. So let's talk about thumbnails. You might be wondering what does getting people to click have to do with kick-ass edits? So let's go back to the life cycle of a video that I just made up a few minutes ago. You need people to actually click that video in order to watch it. And this is really important on YouTube. Even if you're creating family movies, you want people to watch them. And that thumbnail is the very first image that they're going to see, that they're going to be interested in before they ever click play. So you use that thumbnail as a way to draw in their interest and get them to click play and actually watch the video and enjoy the video. So creating video thumbnails is not directly related to editing videos, but it is a kick-ass trick that you can do to get people to actually watch your videos. Okay, so what we're gonna be using here is canva.com. This is a great free platform where you can basically design anything you would ever need to design, but um, we're gonna use it to create custom thumbnails to use with our videos. So you're gonna have to create an account if you don't already have one, I do. So I'm just gonna hit log in over here. So when you first log in, if you've ever used this before, then it's gonna have some of the designs you've worked on before, but we need to create something totally brand new. So I'm just gonna hit this more button and it's gonna load up a bunch of pre-designed stuff with um, different shapes and sizes for different uses. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down under social media and email headers. And there's a YouTube thumbnail right here for us. So Canva is going to load up a bunch of pre-designed layouts for you, which is awesome. These are all really well designed, but I want to encourage you to keep it as simple as possible. If you spend an hour or two editing your video, you don't need to spend another hour on your thumbnail. So I encourage you to keep things as simple as possible, which is actually why I created a printable cheat sheet for you guys with five or six different um, design layouts that you might want to stick with. I encourage you to find a layout and find a style and a design and a typeface that works really well for you and then just kind of stick to that because it just it just cuts down on all of the thinking time and the creating time when it comes to your thumbnails. So you can play around with these layouts if you want to but for now we're just going to ignore them. The first thing that we need to do is come over here to upload and we need to upload our own image. So usually what I do with, uh, with my thumbnails is I take a screenshot from my video as I'm editing it, like that one will work. We're gonna hit open. So we've got that image uploaded and I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna appear over here and I wanna stretch it all the way out. So you can kind of crop it or you know arrange it however, however you want to. 
In this case, uh, I'm just gonna leave it right there in the middle. So what we need to do is add some eye-catching text to our screen, but first, I wanna show you what I usually do. So I don't normally design my thumbnails in Canva. I use Adobe Illustrator because that's just what I'm used to and I have access to it. So if you don't, then Canva is a great place to start with these kinds of designs. So what I did was I went to elements and then under shapes and I just picked this square shape and then I'm just changing the size of it so that it's a nice rectangle. Usually I have more than one line and all of my lines are black so I'll show you um, how to do that. Um, so I need to change the color. So this is white, I need it to be black. So I'm gonna come up here on the left and I'm just gonna choose black and it's gonna change colors for me and I'll do the same thing with that one. So now I have my lines there and we can add some text over them. You want your text to be clear. You want people to read it. So I'm just gonna hit this one and I'm gonna call this snappy. I think, if I remember correctly, this thumbnail is from my snappy jump cuts video. So you can pick your fonts over here. You want one that is going to be easy to read and it's gonna show up nice and big. Um, this one, the letters are a little too close together and we could change that if we wanted to, but um, I'm gonna come up here and look for something else. Like, that's a kind of a cool one. So, um, since I have the color and I have the typeface and I have the size the way I want it, I'm just gonna hit copy so that it copies that text box for me exactly like that. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger because here I'm going to put jump cuts. And we can change the justification here um, so that we are right justified. And I can make these a little bit bigger if I wanted to. I probably would if I was doing this for real. But that is how you can make a uh, thumbnail that's kind of the same style that I use. So let me show you another style that you could do. I try not to cover my face up um, in my thumbnails. I try to keep my face, sometimes it's hard, sometimes I have a lot of words in my, uh, in my thumbnail that I wanna use. So it can be a little bit tricky, but here's what I would do if I needed to kind of have one that was big and centered. I'm just trying to find a good size here. I want jump cuts to be all on one line, so let's make that a little bit bigger. So obviously, this is not readable <laughs> at all. Even if I changed the color of the text, it's still not readable. But one of the things that we can do is instead of applying different effects and things to the actual text, we can add some effects and filters to the background image. So if I come up here, make sure that your background image is selected and not the text. So I'm gonna come up here to filter and I can either choose an actual filter, like a pre-designed uh, pre filter, kind of like what you would be used to with Instagram, or I can just change it all on my own. I could make, bring up the brightness. I could bring down the contrast. Um, I, so I could make it darker. I could make it lighter, crazier. And then if you hit advanced options, you can actually play with the saturation. So I could make it black and white or, you know, almost black and white. I can change the tints so I can make it nice and like pink here. So I just set everything back to normal. If you bring your blur up, then the text jumps out a little bit more at you. So you could bring your brightness up a little bit, maybe your contrast down a little bit. So you can still see in the background that, yeah, there's a person back there. And you know, if you've watched my channel before, you probably would assume that it's me back there. And then you can make your text um, as big as you want here. Uh, that looks terrible. Um, let's keep going here. So that one's okay. So you could do that if you wanted to have your words centered 
on the thumbnail, but it was kind of conflicting with what was going on in the background. I always love the blur trick. So I'm gonna put that back at normal. And another thing that we could do is similar to the first one I did over there where I had kind of those blocks to the right, we can actually just put our blocks right here in the middle. So I'm going to add this um, in the middle here and then I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna put it down below. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Now, yes, these are over top of my text, right? So if, if I click arrange up here, I need to send it back. So we can do that. Now, yes, it's covering up my face, but it's not interfering with the background because I gave that text its own background. So if these are a little bit too square and too blocky for you, you could do something a little bit different. Let's see, I'm gonna take this and make it white-ish, and then I need to give it a little more of a fun font. Um, that one's okay, but I need them to be lowercase. So snappy jump cuts. And um, if we click on text spacing up here, we can adjust our line height. So it's gonna spread things out or pull them together. Um, I, I'm gonna, even though the P and the C are touching, I think that's okay. Um, we could spread them out this way as well, but I don't actually want to do that. So I'm gonna leave that there at zero. And then, um, so what are we gonna do with this? Well, if we wanted my face to stay there in the middle, one thing that we could do is take this little rotation tool down here and turn it just a little bit and then move it to a place on, on the picture that it's not in the way, right? So that it makes sense. Um, I could actually move it up here where it's a little bit darker back there. And then if I wanted to, I could try to give my background there as much space as I possibly can so you could do something like that. Um, I think that's a clever way to get, you know, if you if you if you don't really want that blocky feel and that blocky effect, you can just kind of use a fun font and then just turn it a little bit and move it to whatever uh, side or corner of your picture makes the most sense. So that way, if you had your face or if you know whatever your picture is of and you didn't want to blur it out or cover it up or do anything like that, then this is a fun way to do a thumbnail. I just made these um, quite a bit bigger here. Another thing that you could try, just to make your text stand out a little bit more, depending on what your background is, um, I'm actually gonna take this entire text thing here, the text block, I'm gonna hit copy and I'm gonna change the color to, let's change it to black. And then I'm gonna make that text that I copied just a little bit bigger. So we're at 144 here. Let's make this 148 and then come over here to arrange, move it back. And then I'm just going to use my keyboard buttons here to move this up and over. And so you can kind of create a little bit of a shadow effect. You'll have to play with it and see what's gonna work with the font that you chose. But this is kind of a fun way to play around with your text to make it pop a little bit more in your thumbnail. So when you're done with your thumbnail design and you're totally happy with it, come up here and give it a title. Snappy Jump Cuts Thumbnail. Hit done and then hit download. I usually just download mine in a ping format. You could choose JPEG if you if you wanted to, um, and then just hit download there and it's going to download your design. Now, the really fun thing about Canva is that if you go back here to the, like, kind of like the dashboard area, you have your thumbnail that you created and you could just copy that thumbnail to start a whole new thumbnail. So every time you go to upload a video and create a custom thumbnail, you can have it all set with the font that you use normally and the style and the layout that you normally use. So if you wanna stick with the same layout every time, which is what I do, all you have to do is kind of copy, make a copy and then just 
put the words in there, put the background image in there, upload the, the new background image, and then download it and upload it with your new video and you'll be good to go. So here in YouTube, I already have a thumbnail obviously created for this video, but he, this is where you would upload your thumbnail. YouTube is going to choose three options for you automatically, and usually it does a pretty bad job. Um, but either way, you could come in and just switch to one of the thumbnails that they chose for you, or you can upload your own. So you would see a block here to upload your own thumbnail. And so all you have to do is click that block, upload the, uh, the image that you just downloaded from Canva, and then it will appear over here after you save your changes. So now you know how to create some kick-ass thumbnails for your videos that you can actually get people to actually click and watch. I promised that I had a printable cheat sheet for you. So if you wanna avoid having to kind of reinvent the wheel every time you create a thumbnail and stick to some tried and true um, eye-catching thumbnail designs, then head over to vidpromom.com slash thumbnails and you can download the printable cheat sheet there with all of the layouts and examples that I covered here in the tutorial today. And don't forget about the webinar, one hour to ask kicking edit hit the link in the description below to grab your seat for that. And if this video was helpful for you, let me know in the comments below, like this video, and hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me again in the future. Bye. Is that too much ass kicking? Not on the Vidpro Mom channel.